What's up, my math stars? So in this video, we're going to talk about modeling data with function regression analysis. And I'm not going to go all into detail what regression analysis is. What I'm going to show you is how you could use the TI-84 calculator to do the regression analysis for you. So when we model data, basically what we're looking at is dot plot, or excuse me, a scatter plot of the data. And scatter plots can take all different types of forms. We want to find a model. We want to find a function that models what we see. So in this particular graph, we see data that seems to be making a linear form. So we're going to use a linear model to, well, model that data. In this graph, we see a parabolic form. So we see that the dots kind of go up and come back down. So a quadratic function would be a great model for this data. And in this data, we see a cubic model used when we see the data kind of going up, leveling off a little bit, then going back up again. This would be great for a cubic model. So the whole point is that you got to look at your data, and then you have to find the appropriate model. Now, regression analysis is actually doing it, finding that model. And that's exactly what the calculator could do for you. But it all starts with entering the data into your calculator and then instructing the calculator to find the model that you want. So let's look at two examples. So the table below shows the age in months and the weight in pounds of five Dalmatians. Create a model to estimate the weight based on a given age. So we see that, you know, a three-month-old Dalmatian weighed six pounds, an eight-month-old Dalmatian weighed 18 pounds, and so forth. So what we want to do first is take a look at this data and then find a model that, well, models it appropriately. We want to make, choose, make sure we choose a proper function. So let's first bring up our TID4 calculator. Now, the first thing we have to do is actually put this data into our calculator. To do that, we're going to hit the stat button kind of right in the middle. And we have three commands, edit, calc, and test. We're going to go to the edit command. And here is where we have several lists. Now, if you have anything already in your list, like let's just pretend you have a couple numbers in a list. If you want to delete them, you can highlight them and hit the delete button one at a time. Or you could select the entire list at the top and hit clear down. Don't ever hit the delete button when you're on the list. All right, so we want to type this data in. So we have 3, 8, 10, 15, and 25. Then we're going to slide over to the second list. This is going to be for our outputs, our weights, 6, 18, 24, 37, and 59. Now, that's exactly how easy it is to enter data into your TID4 calculator. All you do is hit stat edit. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to take a look at the data so we know what type of function is going to model it best. So to take a look at the graph, this is going to take a little bit of time. So we're going to hit second y equals. We're going to go to our stat plots. This is where we can plot the data that is in our stats. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter onto plot one. We're going to turn it on by selecting the word on and highlighting it or, or entering on it. Then we want to make sure that the scatter plot is selected. And then it tells us, you know, what data do you want to use for your X's and what data do you want to use for your Y's? So it should default to L1 and L2. So I always tell students, use L1 for your X's and L2's for your Y's. That way you won't have to kind of mess anything up there. And when you're all ready to go, here's the next thing. We got to make sure we choose the proper zoom. If you just hit graph, it's probably going to go to whatever graph you would use last on your calculator. So we want to specifically look at our data. So we want to hit the zoom button. Then we want to go down to number nine, zoom stat. So everything is connected with the, the stat. Now, the first thing you may have notice is that I have some like lines there. Like what are those lines? Well, that's because I have some equations entered into my y equals. So I also tell students, clear out y equals, because the last thing you want your calculator doing is trying to graph some functions from a different class, while at the same time look at some data. So now we go back, we see this nice data. So again, everything's connected with the word stat. The stat button is where you enter the data. Your stat plot is where you organize the plot that you want to create. And then zoom stat is going to zoom in on it. Now, right away, I noticed that this certainly looks linear. So I know that I want to use a linear function to model this data. Now, how do I create that linear function? Well, your calculator is going to do all of it. So you're just going to hit the stat button slide over to the middle where it says calculate and this is where we have a list of a bunch of different function models we have a linear regression or linear model ax plus b a quadratic model that's for quadratics cubic now they, they're called regression models and i don't want to get into the name regression models there's a big long explanation as to why they're called regression models but just know a regression model is a model that is used to represent data that you see in a scatter plot so we got linear models, quadratic, cubics, quartics, 
natural log, exponential, power, logistic, trigonomic, and we got a whole line there. Now, notice that there are two linear models. There's linear AX plus B, which is that more traditional uh, MX plus B kind of form. They don't use M, they use A. But then we have a re linear regression model with A plus BX. Now, you know, the, the A and the B values don't matter, right? Meaning that, you know, what is in this first model, AX plus B, what we call A is going to be a number. And in the bottom model, the A plus BX, it's the same value, but we're just calling it B. Now, in the stats world, we do like to use the A plus BX model as opposed to the AX plus B model. But I'm going to be honest, it does not matter as long as you write it out appropriately. So I'm going to choose the number eight, the linear regression A plus BX. Really does not matter. Hit enter. And it's going to ask me a couple of things. It's going to say first, you know, where is your data? So once again, it should default to L1 and L2. L1 for your X's, L2 for your Y's. So that's the way we like it. And that's the way we enter it in. Then the other thing that's pretty cool here is it wants us to store. Where can we store the regression equation? Now, you actually don't have to do this, but it does provide a nice little visual display, and I'll show you that. So what I want to do is I want to store it into Y1. That way it'll graph the model that it's about to create. Now, where do you get Y1? So you're going to hit the VARS button, which is right next to clear, slide over to Y VARS, and then select the very first option for function, and you'll see a list of all the different Ys. So I'm going to select Y1. What that's going to do is it's going to create a model, and then it's going to store it into Y1 for me. All right, when you're all ready to go, hit calculate, and there is the model. There's the A value, negative 0.746. Always keep in mind three decimal places. And then there's the B value, 2.422. Now, the A value is the y-intercept. The B value is the slope based on how I set it up. If I did use the other version, AX plus B, my A and my B would simply be switched, but they would not change what the values are. All right, so that is the model that I'm going to do. And the cool thing is that the calculator stored that model in Y1. So if I go to Y equals, Notice that it actually put that model into Y1. So if I go back to my graph, the model, the function, is over top of my point. So a pretty nice thing to see that this does a very good job of modeling these points. And that's how simple it is to get the calculator to create the model for you. It's really, really that easy. So there is my model. Like I said, y hat equals negative 0.746 plus 2.422x. Now, what's the little hat on top of the y right there? Well, to be quite honest, it doesn't look like a hat, but we, we pronounce that y hat. The calculator actually doesn't show that, but the reason why we like to write that is to emphasize that it's a predicted y. No one is saying that these this model is going to make perfect estimates of what is going to happen. It's just meant to make predictions. And again, we can actually use this. Remember, X is the age in months of the Dalmatians and Y is the predicted weight of those dogs. So let's actually use it. So for example, maybe a question says, hey, I got a 19 month old Dalmatian. What do you predict its weight to be? Well, based on my model, if I plug in 19, I predict that that dog is going to weigh 45.272 pounds. It's really that simple. You're just using the model, plugging in the input and getting the output. We could also use it backwards. And I got to be honest, in the stats world, we don't recommend using it backwards. But we could say, hey, um, you know, we got a dog that's predicted to weigh 50 pounds. How many months old would that be? So this is where we're now plugging the 50 pounds in for the Y, the weight, and we're going to solve. So we're going to add the 0.746 over, divide by the 2.422, and we get that when that dog is roughly 20.952 or really close to 21 months old, it will weigh a predicted 50 pounds. Not too bad. Let's do one more problem just to show you a different one here. So here we have the population of honey badgers in a particular area was tracked since the year 2000. Below is a table that shows the number of honey badgers in that area at each year after 2000. Create a model to estimate the number of honey badgers based on the number of years after 2000. First thing we have to do is actually put the data into our calculator so we can take a look at it. So we're going to do stat edit. And this is where we see that we already got some data from our previous problem. So highlight the little L's at the top, hit clear down. It's the fastest way to clear everything in a list. All right, then we're going to actually put the data in. So 0, 3, 5, 9, 15, and 20. Those are the years after 2000. So 5 would be 2005. You get the point. 
Then the L2 is going to be my Ys or my population of the honey badgers, 15, 33, 91, 150, 120, and 8. And really go back and double check very quickly that you type those all in right. The last thing you want to do is type them in wrong, and then you're going to get the whole problem wrong. All right, now the first thing we're going to do is look at a scatter plot because we need to make sure that we know what type of function to use to best model our data. So second y equals, go to stat plot one, turn it on, select the little scatter plot, and again, make sure your x's and y's are L1 and L2. It should default to that, but that could get changed if you're doing other things. So pretty simple there. Now, if you don't know where to get L1, like let's just say that it didn't say L1, second number one is where the L1 is, second number two is where the L2 is, and second number three for L3, you get, kind of get the point. All right, then don't forget to do zoom nine. That's going to be that zoom stat. And there we see our data. Now, it definitely looks like a quadratic or a parabola. So that's why seeing it is going to tell me that I need to use a quadratic model. Now, how do I do that quadratic model? Well, I'm going to hit stat, slide over to calculate. And this is where we have a list of all the different models. And again, number five is the quadratic regression line. That's our quadratic model that we want to use. Now, again, it's going to ask for where is your data? L1 is X, L2 is Y. If that needs to be changed, do so appropriately, but that's where I put my data in. And then I always like to store the regression line, so I'm going to hit VARS, over to Y VARS, function, and then Y1. This is just going to allow me to put my model on top of my scatter plot so I can actually see the model <laughs> modeling what I'm seeing. All right, now we're going to go to calculate, and we get that quadratic model, ax squared plus bx plus c. That's obviously a quadratic model. And then it gives us the a, b, and the c value. Remember, three decimal places when you're going to write this out. Now, again, go back to graph, or actually go to y equals first, just to prove that I did store it there. Then when you go to graph, you actually see the nice model going through my data. Now, notice it doesn't go through perfectly. It actually doesn't look like it hit any of the points, but that's exactly what it's meant to do. It's meant to try to model the data, all the data, not a single point, but try to model all the data as best as it can. And then again, now that you have that model, here it is you could actually use it. So I could say, all right, well, you know, what about in 2015 or 2012 or 2013? So you plug in 13, for example, for 2013, and you can actually predict how many honey badgers we had during that particular year. Overall, not too bad. All you have to do is first, enter the data into your calculator. Second, go ahead and look at a scatter plot. That way you know what type of model to choose. Now, some problems will actually tell you the model, like use a linear model, use a cubic model, but oftentimes you might not know, so you gotta look so you can kind of get a feel for what type of function you need to use, and then go ahead and run that regression model, whether it's quadratic, linear, cubic, you know, you name it. And it's pretty easy from there to do this, not overly difficult, so hopefully it's a pretty simple lesson and it makes sense to you.